Hi, everybody. Welcome to CN Live here on NRA TV. Uh, Coley and Noir is out for the week. He'll be back on Monday. Uh, I've had the honor and privilege of being his guest host. I'm Bill Whittle from BillWhittle.com, talking to you from the deep, dark depths of Los Angeles, California. We've got a uh, great guest with us today and a lot of fun things to talk about. Uh, and before we go to guest, uh, our first guest, uh, I just wanted to say something, you know, that I think it struck me after uh, the talk yesterday, and I don't know if it struck you the same way, too. We have been fighting um, this erosion of not just of, of our political beliefs, but of our very fundamental freezen, uh, freedoms. We've been under attack for so long. It's like, I don't know, I'm not speaking for anybody other than myself, but do you find yourselves kind of walking around sometimes like with your fists still clenched? Like, you know, what's the latest outrage going to be? And then all of a sudden you just go, hang on a minute now, hold on. We've got um, we've got President Trump in the White House. We've got a Republican House. We've got a Republican Senate. We're getting Republican solid conservative uh, justices for the Supreme Court. Um, and, you know, I, the man's kind of right. I mean, you almost start, you can't even appreciate how much winning we're actually doing. Um, I I just personally am, am uh, overwhelmed, really, at, at how much has happened, not just in the seven weeks or six, seven weeks of President Trump's um, actual presidency. And if this is seven weeks, wait, you see what he's going to do in four years. I just realized that ever since the night of the election, you can breathe again. You know, we're, we're, we're getting good news and we're getting good news everywhere. And it's it's a little hard to to adopt to, to be perfectly honest with you, after some of the uh, night wars we've been through. And um, one of the biggest allies that the Friends of Freedom have had over the last eight years is uh, NRA TV's uh, longtime friend, uh, Kurt Schlichter from townhall.com. He's joining us again today. Uh, I think, Kurt, good to see you. It's been a while since we've seen you on NRA TV, isn't it? Oh, years and years. Well, OK, a week. Been been about seven or eight minutes, I think. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for sitting in uh, and helping us out at the, at the last minute here. Um, before we get into specifics, I, I want to talk about the new um, Secretary of the Interior. But what do you think, Kurt? You know, we were talking just before the show. Uh, we both live out here in the in the left coast, and, and many of us get a chance to go and visit the United States every now and then. Uh, <laughs> It's it's almost unbelievable, isn't it, Kurt? It's it's literally uh, for me. I, I I'm not kidding. I genuinely sometimes just have to stop and look around and go, my God, the, the the clouds have parted and the sun's coming out. Now we got a lot of work to do, and we've got one opportunity to do it in. But do you get that same sense even out here in California? I do. You know, Bill. Sometimes I wake up and the birds are singing and the sun's out, and I realize Hillary Clinton isn't our president, and maybe we can put off the kind of societal upheaval that she seemed intent on inspiring. We have a I, president, uh, right? You know, our, no, our so, president so right now is, seems to be uh, uh, like, like a conservative uh, uh, poster boy. This, this you know, t tiger beat dream day for conservatives. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah. we, we got, we, we, we've got a secretary of defense named Mad Dog. How, yeah, we've got, like he's like a cross between there. Ronald Reagan and David Cassidy. Um, <laughs> no, he's the Leaf Garrett of supply side economics. He's the Leaf Garrett of, of uh, he is exactly right. And, you know, folks, um, if you're not getting giddy out there and, and, and starting to understand that it's a new game and a, and a fresh start here in America, uh, it's taken us a, a while to really catch on to this. You know, Kurt, uh, just before the show, we were talking about how both of us make a living, paltry though it is, uh, out there um, speaking in public. And the last two or three events I've done were like a Tea Party event, a Republican event. And um, I started my um, my remarks. I just went up to the stage, didn't say anything. And on my iPhone, I have a little tune and I played it in the microphone. And it's na, 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 hey, hey, hey. Goodbye, and then I then I drop in just for a, for an encore. I, ding dong, the witch is dead. The wicked witch of the witch is dead. Let's have some fun, pal. You know we've been sitting in the bunkers, um, you know, taking pot shots over our shoulder as we try to lead a kind of a rear guard action out of the um, the last eight years. Let's have some fun. Why don't we start with um, with the Interior Secretary uh, Brian Zinke? Yet another almost unbelievable collection to what I actually genuinely think may be the best cabinet in American history. What do you I think, think about right. in terms of um, gun rights and especially in terms of hunting uh, rights here in America? I mean, he rode a horse to the Interior Department this morning. How cool is that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, that's he's, got, awesome. he's got like a Did couple of D.C. Uh, uh, Capitol policemen with him. He's riding a horse. He's got uh, Stetson on. It was. Did it he get was to lasso? Awesome. Was he able to lasso? It's like saying, "Hey, America is coming to visit its capital." 
he should he should have had a lasso. Should have lassoed a couple CNN reporters who just kind of dragged him through the dust. Just not not enough to hurt him. Just enough to to embarrass him just a little bit. That is unbelievable. Did he really do that? They do a pretty good job of embarrassing themselves. Yeah, that, that's sure enough. There, Zinke is a. Uh, uh, I, I believe he was congressman. I believe he uh, he was. What a great guy who has a real. Un- the Interior Department needs to be doing out there in that place called America. Um, I'm having a little trouble hearing you, Kurt. I'm breaking up just a little bit for me, but I got I got the 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 great job, America horse and so on. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, that may be just on my end here. Um, you know, let's just kind of start with the foundations. Zinke, as you said, comes in on a horse. He understands what conservation really is. And con- conservation is not a bunch of, uh, of uh, long-haired hippies sitting in a, in a Starbucks in San Francisco someplace talking about the great outdoors that they've not only never seen and never will see, but would scare them just absolutely blind. There he is. Look, at he lo- you know what he looks like, Kurt? He looks exactly like Robert Duvall in um, yes. Apocalypse Now. Exactly. Like, I, you know, I, like I, the smell I was of just going to say that. Uh, smells like victory. Robert Duvall and his cavalry, Stetson is a cavalry battalion commander, which I also was. So, I did not know uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any horses in my cavalry unit. But Obama don't surf. Uh, no, it's 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 amazing, pal. It's 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 absolutely uh, wonderful. You know, you um, know Bill, uh, since since November eighth, it smelled like victory. Yeah, it sure has smelled like victory all over the place. Um, let's just go to the basics for a second here. Um, we now have a, a Secretary of the Interior who's actually been out in the interior. You know, there's a bunch of these, especially millennials today, you know, uh, Kurt, I don't, a lot of these kids, I don't think they've ever been outdoors. I don't mean ever. Um, so what you get from uh, from a lot of progressives is, oh, well, uh, Slick, uh, Zinke's against the environment. He's, he's, he's not environmentally friendly. You know, he's he's pro-hunting and all the rest of it. Um, my, my dad was a hunter since he was five. He grew up in the Pocono Mountains. He died in 2002. His property was right up against Valley Forge. And he said, in my 77 years, I have never seen so many deer in the United States of America. It's just, it's unbelievable how many deer there are. And, and progressives think, oh, they're going to go out and shoot deer. It's like, you know, it's this or starve to death. It's nice to have somebody who understands that nature is red in tooth and claw and, um, and who understands the entire ethics of, of American hunting. Well, exactly. It's it, you know, hunting is uh, an important cultural aspect of the lives of tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of Americans. I grew up hunting with my dad. I, I don't do it anymore because you know I'm lazy and I don't like going out in the woods when it's cold. But you know, I spend enough time in the infantry. But yeah, you know, the the, the level of disrespect for the cultural traditions and the values of regular Americans, I think is one of the things that inspired Donald Trump. And and the attitude towards hunting is just one more aspect of that. You know, you don't have to like everything other people do, but you don't need to nag them about it, and you certainly don't need to improve them. Because when you do, they get mad. And then they elect Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Don't you think, though, that so much of, of the um, opposition to hunting is from people who who simply have never been outdoors. I'll just give you a quick example. Let's say there's a video shows up and it's a video of just a guy with a 30 out six and he and he drops a you know drops a bucket at 2,000 yards, makes a nice shot, and 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 progressives go, he killed the poor deer and the deer just died. None of them have ever been outdoors long enough to understand that there is no natural. You don't die of old age in the in the wild, uh, Kurt. Deer's you gonna know, die of something. The deer, the deer do not normally go to a retirement home and they're fed clover and, and they slowly, you know, drift off to sleep surrounded by loved ones. In the wild, you either die a fast death or a slow death. Sometimes you're eaten alive and nothing dies of old age out there. And, of course, they never get to see that aspect of it. If they could see a deer being eaten alive by a cougar, let's say, um, they might have a different opinion about, about this whole hunting thing. So, once again, it's just a complete lack of, of any basic information uh, in terms of what they're talking about. You know, the, the, these are the same people who, uh, while they're pining away for some sort of venison hospice, uh, they're eating <laughs> white beef. You know, as if as if animals self slaughter. Look, nature's a bloody ugly thing. It is. And if you have to talk about somebody who understands that and someone who ameliorates the misery that goes along with nature, 
look to the hunters, America's greatest conservationist. I, I don't even want to think what my dad would have done if I had, say, wounded an animal and not gone and, and, and finished it, or if yeah. I had, had caused unnecessary pain. Of course, that never occurred to me. I mean, not till I went to law school. But it, <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's not hunting culture. I mean, every once in a while you hear about some idiot who goes out and, you know, causes unnecessary pain. But idiots are idiots. They're the exception. They're rare. They're I would, rare. I, I would, uh, I, I, I wouldn't give a hundred of these so-called uh, Silicon Valley environmentalists, these Chardonnay sipping weirdos from San Francisco with their fetish for bait fish over farmers uh, mm -hmm. to one Montana elk, elk hunter. There's no comparison. Yeah. And because they don't know any hunters, because these people, especially in the, you know, we talk about the, the uh, hippies in, um, in uh, San Francisco, but the people in the media uh, and, and politicians, too, who don't actually get outdoors, they don't understand just, I don't think there's a person in the country who loves wildlife more than hunters. That's why they're out there all the time, you know, they like being with them, they understand them, they understand the cycle of life and death, they understand the idea of the balance between predators and prey, and and this kind of, you know, oh, they're so cruel and they must be stopped. It looks like those days are coming to an end in America, at least for four years now. It's nice to see, it's a nice change. And boy, you know, life in America would be so much better if we didn't spend all our time trying to improve other people. I don't need people yeah. to tell me I'll be a better person if I don't go out and shoot a pheasant. On the other hand, I don't feel compelled to go to West Hollywood and tell somebody, you know, he shouldn't be a performance artist when he's not being a barista. I don't see it as my business. And I wish people would give me the same respect. You know, let's have, I, here, here's my thing, Bill. Let's have the same respect for other subcultures in America that we have for cultures overseas. For instance, you wouldn't go and... Um, you know, tell a, a bunch of Hindus, hey, your religion makes no sense to me. Let me give you a list of why I think it's bad. Here, here's a yeah, list. Yeah, and here's a hamburger. And you don't and you don't tell Muslims, here, have a have a BLT because exactly. I think it's good and delicious. It would never occur to do to that. But hold, hold on to that thought, okay? Because when I come back, I want to go to this entire topic about which side tells the other side uh, what to do and the other one doesn't. we got to go to a break for a moment. We'll be back with our friend, the hilarious and brilliant uh, Kurt Schlichter from Town Hall. This is CN Live on uh, NRA TV. I'm Bill Whittle, and we'll be back in just a moment.